Okay, everybody, I am so happy. We are live, and if you're here, let me know. I'll be so happy that you're here. Boo, you are, here we go, boo. Boo, what can I tell you? You are just the greatest ever, and I just adore having you. And this will be great for you, like it will be for so many, uh, particularly at this time. So it is seven o'clock. Welcome to Dishing the Dietitian. Particularly now, while many people are cooking more at home, while many people don't want to spend so many repeat trips to the supermarket or ordering, and you're trying to wonder, how long can my food stay fresh? What's the best way to go? Or if you ordered food on a Wednesday, you ordered takeout, and now it's sitting in your fridge and you're thinking, is that still good for my Friday night dinner? When, when do I need to toss it? This is the live stream for you. Welcome, everybody. I'm so thrilled to see my friend Boo and Angela. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and the, what puts me, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Let me introduce myself. My name is Debbie Kravitsky. I've been a registered dietitian for over 30 years. Currently, I'm a clinical dietitian at Mass General Hospital's Cardiovascular Disease Prevention Center. I also have a private practice that now, due to this coronavirus, I am operating through Zoom. If that interests you, you can certainly email me at debbie.kravitsky at gmail.com. And Debbie is D-E-B-B-I-E, -D -E Kravitsky, K-R-I, V as in Victor, I-T-S-K-Y, at gmail.com. And we can arrange for an individual nutrition consult. I also consult with many corporations. I've appeared in national publications such as Harper's Bazaar and Family Circle Magazine. I've also appeared in television. It gives me my greatest joy and pleasure to help you to reach your dietary goals by providing you with current evidence-based nutrition information that's accurate. Together, we will shop, we will cook, and I will navigate the way. Hi, Richard. I'm so thrilled you're here. And it is such an important topic. So I'm so glad you think so as well. Like many of the topics that we do in the live stream, these are all a result of suggestions from all of you. And I'm always thrilled to take them. So if there is anything you want me to do a live stream on, make sure to put that in the comment box. Uh, box below because I'm happy to take those suggestions. Also, if you are new to the channel and haven't yet done so, please hit the subscribe button. That will allow me to continue to do this. YouTube has put handcuffs on me a little bit and they told me that they need me to get to a thousand subscribers in order for me to live stream from my phone which or my mobile device, which will allow me much more freedom and versatility for future live streams. I need to get to a thousand. We are getting close, but if you could also, if you haven't subscribed, do so. And if you know someone who this might interest them, if you could have them also subscribe, that would be great. But I'm so thrilled that you guys are here with me now because it's such an important topic. I want to start by, um, I'll take some of your, your questions and comments, but I also want to just go review some things that we've done in the past. And that is the importance of the labeling around these foods that many people ask, do I have to throw it out? It passed the, it passed the date on the package. So do I have to throw it out? The answer is no, not necessarily. And most likely not at all. So look to see what it says on your label. If it says sell by, that's really not for you. That's for the stores. That's how long that they can really display it while it's maintaining its peak freshness. But it really has nothing to do with the safety of the food. Eggs, for example, can go th maybe three weeks after the sell-by date. And if you want a good trick as to how to know if your eggs are safe or not, take your egg out, if, put it in a bowl of water. If it floats, you toss it. If it sinks to the bottom, it's fresh, it's good. Even further for you to know, if it tilts to the side, it's fresher, if, if it sinks and tilts to the side, it's fresher. 
if it stands upright at the bottom of your bowl under the water, then it's, it's, it's not quite as fresh. Look to the video on how to make breakfast and breakfast ideas. And that's how you're going to see that I did the demo of the egg in the water. It was pretty fun. So that might interest you. Milk should be used within seven days after you're opening it. So if you haven't opened it, it still can go by past the, the, the sell by date. But once you open it, you, you should definitely toss it within seven days. And as always, I always trust you. Use your senses. Smell that milk. If it smells, toss it. When in doubt, throw it out. That's your guide. Now, if it says best if used by, that again, it's about quality. It's not about safety. So it doesn't make a difference. Sour cream, for example, might have a zippier taste before the sell-by date, but it's ter so it's totally fresh, uh, safe to use. Guaranteed fresh is usually a term they use for bakery items. And use by date is the last day recommended for use of the product while, it, while it's at its peak quality. Again, nothing to do with safety, just about quality of or, or freshness. The one that you really do want to pay attention to is expiration date. This is the date determined by the uh, manufacturer of that product, that it's the last day that you should consume that food. And after that day, you should throw it out. So very few f foods will have the expiration date. Most of them will have use by date or sell by date. So go by that. Now, say you're going to um, buy your foods and you want to know how long can they stay in the fridge? And if you guys have any questions, definitely type them in. I'll take them. But your, your eggs, for example, if the, you buy fresh eggs and they're in the shell, and I always encourage everybody, and it's so easy at this time of year in particular when there's so much good produce in season, to buy it locally grown, to buy it in season. Why? It's going to be fresher. And the fresher it is, the longer it will last. If somebody, some things had to be sitting in a warehouse for a few days, or it's been coming here, uh, traveling across country on trucks, then it's not going to be as fresh when it gets to you. So it's not going to hold as longer once you get home. So if you buy locally grown, you're, you've got a better chance of this holding longer in your fridge. In general, Eggs that are fresh in their shell will last you four to five weeks. And don't freeze eggs. Um, and, and you're going to be great. Now, deli, three to five days. Now, for me, my deli goes about three days if I'm pushing it for, but three days. So I go by, I sometimes will put a marker or a sticker in a marker. I don't go by the date on the, on the package. I go by me, and then I always smell it and look for that I don't want it to be slimy. I always check the texture. That's how you're going to know. And again, when in doubt, throw it out. But three to five days for your deli. If you buy store cooked convenience things like a rotisserie chicken, for example, they also will last three to four days and don't freeze them. They don't, they don't freeze well. If you're buying raw food, so you're buying raw chicken or raw hamburger, ever wonder how long you can Keep that in the fridge. Do you need, is it been sitting in the fridge and you forgot about it? Now you don't know, you know, can I use it for dinner or not? Well, here's your guide. For raw hamburgers or ground meat, it'll stay one to two days, one to two days in your fridge. If you had frozen it, it'll stay three to four months in the freezer. Ground turkey, ground veal, ground pork, ground lamb, however, same thing. Now, if you had um, lunch meats, three to five days, if you had um, it bought soup that was already cooked in the market or your made soup and it has uh, vegetables or meats or mixture of both, it'll stay in your fridge for three to four days. It can be frozen for two to three months. If you bought, um, let's just say, if you bought steak, three to five days in your fridge, raw, and six to 12 months frozen. And you can freeze it for longer. The issue is the quality and the texture. If you bought um, cooked meat, you had leftover, you cooked a piece of chicken or a piece of steak. If you've cooked a piece of steak, three to four days, it'll stay in your fridge. You can freeze it cooked. It'll last for two to three months. If you have chicken and it's fresh, it'll stay in your fridge for one to two days. The same goes for turkey. Um, if you've cooked it, 
it will stay um, three to four days. It, you can freeze it for four to six months. And fish. Fish does not hold well. So lean fish, one to, and the same thing with fatty fish, will stay in your fridge for one to two days. Now, you can freeze fish. The leaner the fish, the longer it will stay. So lean fish, like a cod, for example, will stay six months. But a fatty fish, like swordfish or bluefish or salmon, will last in your, fr your freezer for two to three months. If you have fresh shrimp or scallops, it can st it, same thing, one to two days for fish and shellfish, but it will freeze for three to six months. And canned seafood will um, stay, if you've mixed tuna fish and you want to know how long can I keep making that sandwich for or put it in a salad, it'll stay for three to four days. Tom Monahan, how are you? It's a wonder we're still alive. I wasn't aware of the leftover rules. Yeah, so it makes a big difference because bacteria can start to grow. And that's what you're that's exactly what you're trying to avoid. Now, people always ask me also, I'm getting food delivered, or I'm gonna not go home after the market. And I want to know what's my window? Your window is two hours unless you've had you're in the middle of a heat wave like we are now then if it's over 90 degrees, your window is one hour. So even if the guy has delivered or the gal has delivered the produce to your mark, to your front door, but you're not going to be home yet, um, you could better get an hour or two, depending on if it's over 90 degrees, um, if, it's un, if it's cooler than two hours. But the window starts, the, the clock starts, the timer starts from the minute they take it off the shelf and goes into the cart. So you've got to factor in, are they delivering to 4,000 people before they get to you? But my thinking, my hope, I would have hoped that it was in a refrigerated um, truck, but I have seen them in their own cars load up. So um, just know, get it in. If, if something's being delivered, be home so that you can get that right away and put it right away. Now, the secret with produce and storing produce so it lasts longer is a couple of things. Number one, definitely buy in season. Number two, they need, like people, they need their space. Don't overcrowd your fridge or your, your crispers because they need to be able to breathe. One layer, not, and I have to tell you, I am completely guilty of this. Let me know if this is you. So, in getting ready for today, I have to tell you, the funniest part about the whole thing was I realized all the things I have not been doing correctly. And I have learned a few tricks and hacks that I'm going to share with you. But make sure that you understand that there are certain fruits and vegetables that emit a gas called ethylene gas. And what this ethylene gas does is it promotes the ripening or the the quicker that food should decay. So you need to keep these foods away from each other. So unless you need something to get ripened quickly. So something like a banana emits ethylene gas. So if you have an avocado, for example, you need to ripen it quickly, put it right next to a banana and on your counter and it will ripen faster. That's pretty cool. But if you want your bananas to hold, um, in my house, they're not even allowed to come in the house. Just saying the word is making my daughter cringe, but separate them from the bunch. So they're not emitting towards each other and doing that ethylene gas. Same thing with onions and potatoes. Onions and potatoes don't get stored in the fridge. They get stored in a cool, dark place, but not together because they'll emit gases that will um, cause each other to ripen way too quickly. So keep these fellas separately or gal, put, keep these uh, foods separate so that they don't, um, they don't cause premature ripening or then decay. Apples secrete ethylene gas. Now, what you'll see in the bottom of some packages, like raspberries, for example, blueberries, in those plastic containers, you're going to see air holes, so that will allow moisture to escape and air to circulate. But you'll also see a little liner, and that is to absorb the ethylene gas. Janice, good evening to you. It, there is a number on eggs, which is the actual day they harvested or packed, numerical. So 135 is approximately four months and 15 days. 
interesting. And you can always do my tried and true with the bowl. Um, but that's that's pretty stunning, that numerical. So 135. That's interesting. Yeah, per pretty good. Thank you, Janice. Great tip. And because of the um, because you want your foods to stay, it's interesting to know that um, you always want to eat your most per perishable foods first because they're going to go quickly. So artichokes, asparagus, eat them first, um, even before cucumbers and cauliflower, which will last a little longer. Right to you, Janice. You're awesome. I love that. Asparagus is an interesting one. Not all Produce has to go in the fridge, but I do put my produce in the fridge. Let me know if you do, except for the potatoes and onions, which I mentioned. Asparagus, store it in an upright glass container that you have filled a little bit, covering the bottom with a little bit of water, and then cover it in the bag that it came with. So, for example, I might, this is the bag my asparagus came in. I'll put it in a bag with a little water, I'll cover it with this and in the fridge it goes, and that will help it to stay crisper. How do you know if your asparagus is fresh? Take a look at the stems where those leaves are. They should be nice and taut and tight and stand up straight. As it's starting to wilt over or as it's starting to open, it's not quite as fresh. I happen to love asparagus. Let me know if you do. One of the things that I love about asparagus is it's delicious on the grill and I grill like uh, I grill all the time, so I can just put asparagus directly on the grill, and it's yummy. Beets cut off the tops and the leaves to retain the firmness, and they'll stay for one to two weeks in an open container in the fridge with a wet towel. Hi, Tom. You've never tried them, but do those green bags I've seen every time? You know, I'm not sure. I think they're good, actually. I think they do absorb some of the ethylene gas, and that's their job, and they also can absorb some moisture. I'm not sure if it's worth the investment or not. For me, I think it's better just to buy a little less and just keep keep it fresh or buy frozen and then, then you're good to go. I got both of you. Hi, Steinler Consulting. How are you? I always learned so much from you. Which are your favorite foods that you like? Um, fine wines taste better with time. <laughs> um, so what are my favorite foods that like fine wines taste better with time? Well, cheese would have been one of those, but I'm not doing that. But I can tell you when I'm thinking about taste better with time, I always think mold. That's where my head went. And so when I do, I always think about my bread, which just doesn't last long. Let me know if you have this issue and you're wondering what's the best way to store bread. Some people, the best way, I had a fellow, a friend of mine who was a CEO of a bread company. And he said, Deb, I'm telling you how to store the bread. Keep the few pieces that you want in in a container on your counter and then put the whole loaf in the freezer or put it in individual bags in your freezer and it will hold the longest. And he's totally right. But if you're going to put it on your counter, put it in a cool, dark place, like your microwave, for example, just don't forget that it's there and turn the microwave on. But one other trick, because some people don't want their bread cold. And I get that. I live with those people. So one way, here is my hack for you, is to take your loaf of bread. This is unbelievably wild to me. And your hack is put a stalk of celery right in the bag, just like this, and then seal this bag good and tight. This is my sourdough, good and tight. And then that celery will absorb the moist, will give off moisture, keep this bread nice and moist and not and prevent the development of mold how awesome is that that is pretty cool to me um cucumbers can be stored at room temperature but keep them away from the bananas the melons and the tomatoes corn should really be eaten that first day otherwise it can stay in the husk in the fridge uh for a few days Celery, the best way to store celery, because I love celery. I don't know about you guys. Do you like it? I adore it. I love it nice and crisp. So the trick is take a piece of aluminum foil and take your celery and just wrap it. And that celery will hold in your fridge they say months. I don't believe that, but I think it'll stay three to four weeks and you'll be totally fine. Um, at least two weeks. That celery should stay nice and crisp. Eggplant, 
not in the fridge. Nice, dry, cool, dark place. Same thing with garlic. I have a garlic container that I keep my garlic in, and um, it's amazing. Green beans, store them in a produce bag or wrapped in a paper towel in the crisper. And same thing with herbs. Herbs, you can take them out, wash them, treat them gently like flowers, roll them in a paper bag. Foil is better for celery. It keeps it, I know, is this credible, Janice? So celery will keep, I know it's not so eco-friendly, but celery will keep that, um, foil will keep the celery crisp and that's what you're looking for, for for celery. You want it crisp. That's what you love. It's all about that, that crunch. Um, that's what you're looking for. And remember, we're eating the rainbow. We're, fiber's your friend. This is just what you want and to keep it ready. Now, it's best to wait to wash your greens before you store them because you'll, you'll accelerate the aging. So I would wrap them in um, paper towel and then put them in the crisper and they will stay for a week. If you do destem them, place them in a bowl, rinse them water, dry the leaves, wrap them in the to dish towel, and they'll store in your crisper for a week or more. Mushrooms would be better stored in a paper, a brown paper bag. So put them in a paper bag, put them in the crisper, and they should mushrooms should hold for a week for you. Radishes, turnips, parsnips, cut off the tops and the leaves. That will help them to stay firm. And they'll stay a few weeks in an open container with a wet towel. Now, one of the things I do love to do is I line my crisper with paper towels to help absorb extra moisture. And I love, I don't know if any of you use these. I happen to love these containers with the, with the flaps. They hold my produce just beautifully. What's the best way to store ginger? Ginger, you can put it in the fridge or the freezer. Ginger freezes beautifully. Um, yeah, so you've been you you've been losing your ginger. Yeah, so take your you can freeze that ginger. It will hold beautifully. I'd wrap it and I'd I'd actually freeze it. But it also you can put that in the fridge and it will hold longer because otherwise you're right, Janice. On the counter, ginger just doesn't hold. Um, but I if I don't cut fresh produce. In my house, it just doesn't last. So this is my watermelon. You can see some juices accumulated because they've been eating it, which is just what I want. And um, it holds beautifully in these snap containers. I'm cutting out the air, and I'm also that will also be a barrier to to other foods and to other odors, which is just what I want. For those of you who like berries, store them unwashed. Keep them in their container. Um, because that will have that, that liner. Don't refrigerate bananas. Cherries, store them in the refrigerator unwashed. They'll last three to five days. So if most of this is three to five days, then you want to make sure that that's how you're planning. You don't want your food to go bad. So think about in three to five days, what are you going to realistically eat? And then you'll go back to the store or you'll place another order. You always can buy flash frozen of fruit or vegetables, flash frozen fruit should not have a syrup. It should just be the fruit that's flash frozen. You also can freeze your own. You can cut it up, put it on a layer of parchment in a, on a cookie sheet in your freezer till it freezes. And then you'll gather it up and wrap it and, and you can store it in your freezer till you need it. If you buy vegetables frozen, just make sure they're flash frozen without any sauce. And they are just as nutritious as fresh. So whichever way, um, whichever way that you want. Grapes, store them in a paper bag in the fridge. And kiwi can stay at room temperature for a few days, but the kiwi will stay longer, will stay for about a week in your fridge. Citrus fruits can absorb flavors from other foods in the fridge. So sometimes it's best to store them at room temperature, but not together. Try to keep them separate, not in a bowl, um, because they'll, they'll ripen each other. Melon. Uncut can stay at room temperature if you want, but keep it away from the sun. And mango can stay until it's ripe, and then you move it into the fridge. If you need something to ripen, like an avocado, you can certainly put it in a paper bag, a brown paper lunch bag, or put it on the counter, and it will ripen. And once you can see it's getting there, put it in the fridge, and then it will hold longer. 
If you've cut your avocado and you think, oh gosh, no, I only needed half. What's the rest? What's going to happen to the other half? All you need to do is create a barrier. So you can dip it in lime or lemon juice, or you can just cover it with a plastic wrap, tightly wrapped, and that will prevent that barrier. If it turns brown, it's not that it's bad. It's just the oxidation with the, with the uh, air. So you're totally fine. Papaya, store it in room temperature till ripe and then put in the fridge. Same thing for most of these. Now, stone fruits, you can store like apricots and nectarines, plums. They can stay at room temperature. Stem end down to ripen or keep them in the refrigerator um, when already ripe. I'm loving that it's this time of year because I love, I don't know about you guys, but I totally love fruit. So the plums, the peaches, they're unbelievable. It's like candy and it's all delish at this time of year. We are just so fortunate um, to be in summer. If you find yourself with some hand, uh, with some wilted vegetables, then your best efforts are to use them to saute them. Um, but try putting them in a little water to freshen them up. My trick for strawberries, it's an incredible trick and it really works. Is um, So I do it for your cantaloupe, to ripen your cantaloupe, keep it on the counter and it will ripen fast. And if you need it to really ripen fast, if you happen to have a banana or an apple, put it next to that on your counter because they emit the ethylene gas, which will ripen that cantaloupe even faster. So I hope that helps. And once it does, then you put it in the fridge. So I love cantaloupe stew. So I'm glad you're eating healthy foods. Go you. Um, for strawberries, the, this is my tip for strawberries. For organic strawberries, you, you really don't need to do this. However, I find that it gets rid of any possible grit or anything on that or residual pesticide on the strawberries. And it makes them you can totally taste the difference. It's if you take your strawberries out and you rinse them, four parts water, one part vinegar, leave it in there for 20 minutes, then rinse it with cool water and dry them off. And I'm telling you, they're going to hold longer and taste even sweeter and better. It's stunning the difference. So that's my tick, tip for you for strawberries because I also... There's really very little fruit that I don't like. I love, love, love strawberries. And that way your strawberries will be amazing, amazing, amazing. You also might want to consider um, getting a, um, a chart. So if you go, I have a chart here for you that you can, I've shared this with you before, but I have it again. And it's, it's really very helpful is to have a chart that you can put on your fridge, which will teach you. It's from foodsafety.com. And it looks like this, you can see. And it will tell you the storage of how long that these foods can stay in your fridge or freezer. And you'll have it. And you could even take a picture of it. And um, yes, Tom, hi, white win white vinegar. Yeah, I just use regular white vinegar. And that's what you use for the strawberries. Best tip ever. I'm so glad, Janice. So yeah, do that with your strawberries and let me know. You can let me know next live stream or anytime because you can always message me um, and let me know if you like that. It's pretty unbelievable. And it was a game changer for me as I am a strawberry, strawberry, strawberry love up. So, um, so it's really good. Now, if you are just as another tip for you, if you are going to the store and you're going, you're getting out and you got that mask, this is a whole different world today, is it not? So you've got the mask. And so you're going to get all your errands done in one shot because you're out and that's how it's going to go. So you're going to the store, but you're not going home. Then bring a cooler. And the trick with the cooler is it's got to be packed. The fewer ingredients, the warmer that it's not going to stay as cold. So pack that freezer. If you're only going to the store for a few things, take a smaller cooler and fill it with ice packs because you need to keep it cold. And so you need to really pack that cooler. If you're going to the beach and you're bringing a lunch or um, you're picking up sandwiches on the way, then you need to pack that cooler um, so that you get just the size that you need to hold these things as tight as possible. And if you're 
coolers, you'll have one cooler and it's bigger, then just pack it full of ice, fill some Ziploc bags with ice cubes, do what you need to get these, those ice blocks, those bricks that you put in your freezer and you're ready because you need to pack that, pack that full. Now, if you're grilling, make sure that for food safety, you keep separate containers. You'll look at my previous videos on that to make sure that you keep, that you always check temperatures of food when you're cooking. Um, if you want to refreeze food in the freezer, you can. Um, just make sure that you discard any items that have come into contact with raw meats and juices. Any other questions? So my tip for you is your things will last probably three to five days. Make sure you take care of them. Most of the time, it's by not prepping at all ahead of time. So except for the asparagus, which I think is very cool, and for the... Um, for, for herbs and spices, treat them like flowers, wash them, rinse them, r r put them in paper towels. I know that from personal experience, when I try to save time and I wash my romaine lettuce and I wipe it down and then I put it in the fridge, it just doesn't last as long. So greens are best just not washed and you'll wash them as you use them. The same thing with all of these other foods. They're sometimes better. They will last longer. So know you and know how you eat because sometimes it's an e a matter of convenience and how quickly. Um, Fred, the ginger tip is great. I always had to toss it after a bit. Yes. And I'm, I love ginger too. I just made um, some bok choy that I just made with some fresh ginger. It was a huge hit. I don't know about any of you, but um, people in my house, because I've been cooking so much, have been asking me to mix up my flavor profiles um, because they're getting tired of the same old, same old. And I totally get that. So um, in an effort to do that, I did cook some bok choy. Have any of you ever made bok choy? It, it was yummy, yummy, yummy. I got a thumbs up in this house and that's, that always works for me. So use that, um, but you can refreeze. You can also freeze nuts. If you're looking for your nuts to hold longer, you can put them in the freezer and they will hold longer. Uh, but makeups, don't freeze those. Keep those at room temperature. They'll stay about three to five months for, for, um, for, to be safe and to be fresh. If you bought a pizza and you want to know, you know, we're trying to keep it real. You're not always ordering the best. But if you did get a pizza, then um, it'll stay three to four days in your fridge if you're wondering about that. And most cooked foods that you've gotten from this, from a restaurant will stay about three days in your fridge and it will stay safe for you to eat. So if you bought it Wednesday, you're thinking Friday, can I have it again? Yes, you can. But if you wait till next Monday, no, then you've then you've gone too long. Um, so those are my tips. Watch apples, watch potatoes, watch onions. They emit that gas. Can you freeze nuts after they are roasted? Yes, you can, Fred. And Fred, thanks for joining me. I'm loving having you here. Um, welcome to Dishin with the Dietitian. Yes, you can. You can freeze them. And they hold longer. The oil gets it as quickly. I love, love, love nuts. Um, I love, love, love nuts. Um, Sometimes you feel like a nut. Um, and mix up your nuts. They give you different oils, which are all beneficial. And nuts come along with that great package of fiber. And fiber is your friend. Portions, if you're watching your weight, because these are fats and these are calorie dense. It doesn't take long. As a side note, um, the cheapest calorie nut is pistachios. 25 pistachios for 100 calories versus Hundred calories, so you get more from pistachios. Hi, Tom. Always looking for a new veggie choice. How did you make or prepare the bok choy? Yeah, so Tom, I know you love to cook. I love to cook. Um, so I sautéed it in a little um, oil with that Thai ginger, and I added some fresh ginger and some other spices. So I will, I will get that recipe for you. But it was really good. I did it in a skillet on top of the stove, and it took no time at all. Um, I have a shallow, like a brazier, uh, cast iron, and it was one of those um, stove. It's not a stove. It's um, I'm forgetting the name. It's it's the white. Le Creuset. Le Creuset. That's why I have a daughter who has a mind. Le Creuset. And it was incredible. 
So I will get you that recipe if you're interested because bok choy was delicious and you can mix it with brown rice and chicken or whatever you like and Thai ginger and it's yummy, yummy, yummy. And it really takes no time. Um, you might try it tomorrow. Oh, let me know what you think, Tom. Hi, Susan. How are you? Previously frozen, Sam. Can it be refrozen raw? Um, you know, I don't think so. I don't, I think cooked, but I'm going to look that up. I have it here. So hold on for one minute. I will look that up for you. But um, I think you either use it or you toss it. And when in doubt, remember, throw it out. Um, let's see. If, if it, it's totally thawed, right? You're just going to lose some of the quality. That's the issue. So let me see. Hold on. I gotta, I've got to... If you have, where's, okay, here we go. If you have fish, you can, it still contains ice crystals and feels as cold as if it was refrigerated. You can refreeze. There will be some texture and flavor loss. So if you've, if you, if, if it's thawed over two hours, you'd got to discard it. I would discard it. So sorry, Susan. If you, if it's been previously frozen, I wouldn't refreeze it. If if it's completely thawed, I would not. I would toss it. It just won't be the same. It'll be safe, but it won't be the same because the texture and the flavor will will be diminished. So I hope that helps. But these are questions that we need. Oh, you're welcome, Susan. Um, these are the questions that you really want to know because um, sometimes. You know, you think you're going to use it and then you're not. And then what happens then? So that's why try to, one of the good things about this is we're really trying to fine tune our pre-planning and fine tune our shopping skills for food because you don't want to waste. You don't want to buy too much that it goes bad and you don't want to buy too little that you don't have enough and have to repeat trips to the supermarket. So try to think about what you realistically are going to eat in your house and, um, that most produce will last about three to five days and how you're going to store it properly. And then you will be good to go, but it's fun to vary these vegetables. It's fun to vary these fruit experiment with different squashes and different um, things like the bok choy and it's yummy. And Tom, let me know how you do and what your recipe, what you came up with. Cause I know you're an amazing cook and um, I'm hoping everybody that this has been helpful for you as you're, planning your trips to the market or thinking about what am I going to be eating this week and how can I make it last a little longer and be even more yummy than ever. So if your bread needs to last longer, put a celery stick in it. How cool is that? And wrap your celery in tin foil. Those are two of my tips and freeze your ginger. All right. Any other questions or comments? I've loved having you all here today. Um, I just love staying connected, particularly at this time. And um, Angela, I do hope I get to see you in the center in October. However, Angela, we're not doing any um, one-year follow-ups. That's I must tell you that. Oh, Janice, thank you. Enjoy the heat and be well. I have to tell you, Janice, I know everybody complains about the heat, humidity. Think February. It's my favorite time of year. I'm loving this. And you're welcome, Tom. Have a good week. I'll let you know when I try it. Oh, fabulous. Terrific. And everybody, um, I will see you in two weeks as always. And if there's anything you want me to do a live stream on, absolutely. And for those of you who have not yet hit the subscribe button, please do so. But it, as always, it has been a pleasure. You love this weather too. I, Tom and I, we're in. So have a great night, everybody. Unless you have any other questions, I'm going to wish you a great night and stay safe, everybody, and eat yummy food and keep it safe as well. All right, everybody, enjoy. It has been a total pleasure tonight, as always. And you love the ginger and celery tips, Fred. So uh, you're welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. Loved having you all. Have a good night, everybody. Take care.